Welcome to the first lecture on embryology. This particular lecture will be covering a topic known as embryogenesis. Embryogenesis is really looking at the first eight weeks uh, after gestation, and this is really where we're looking at the embryo itself. After the eight weeks, it's moving into more functional maturation of the embryo, and it's, the name changes into a fetus. So for today, we're just really focusing on uh, embryogenesis, which is essentially the early stages of what's happening in the embryo. So this is all the differentiation um, before we just then mature into a fetus. So there's three main uh, learning outcomes for today, and they're actually just broken into the first three weeks. So the first outcome are the processes that occur in the first week. This is going to be fertilization, cleavage, and implantation. The second Outcome, learning outcome, is the second week, the process is in the second week, which is further implantation and bilaminar formation. And then finally, the third outcome is the third week, which is looking at gastrulation and how the embryo starts to fold. Now, if we look at this section, so we're going to work on two parts of the whiteboard. So this first section is looking at a frontal section of the uh, female reproductive anatomy. So we've got the fallopian tube here into the uterus. We do have the eggs and the processing um, there, but um, the anatomy itself is going to be the ovaries, the fallopian tubes moving into the, the uterus. So let's start with week one. The first step, so this is learn outcome one, in the first week, the first thing we do is uh, fertilize. So the egg needs to be fertilized. So the ovary, so in the menstrual cycle, at about day 14, we have ovulation. So an egg is released from the ovary and it's taken into the fallopian tube, where around the ampulla region, we will have the egg sit ready for fertilization. Now the sperm itself is coming up through the vagina into the cervix. So only a fraction amount of sperm will make it all the way through. Now the time that it will take for the sperm to reach this section could range from 30 minutes to about five, six days. So it's quite variable. Now, before it can fertilize the egg, it has to actually go through a level of capacitation. So within the female reproductive tract, the sperm itself has to kind of um, remove certain proteins and certain liquids from the head of the sperm to allow it to then fertilize the egg. So this will take approximately seven hours to do so. So even a, a sperm that might reach within 30 seconds, sorry, 30 minutes, opposed to five hours, it still has to go through that process. So it's not always the first one to this point. What has to happen first is capacitation. So once the sperms have been capacitated, then they are ready to then fertilize the egg. Now the egg itself, if you look at the blue, the blue ring, that's what we call the zona pellucida, which is the outer tougher part of the egg. And then we have all these cells that are outside it, which are what we call the corona radiata, which is mean the radiating crown. These are all follicular cells that have come out from the, from the ovary. Now the sperm typically, once it's been capacitated, it has to cause the front of the head of the sperm to invaginate, which is called the acrosome reaction, and that will start to burrow itself through the corona radiata, so it will kind of eat its way through, and many sperm will do this at the same time. However, it's only the sperm that actually fuses with the zona pellucida and starts to kind of eat through it, through the acrosome, so the acrosome will invaginate, as I said, certain lysosome enzymes will eat through the corona radiata and then once it hits the zona pellucida then it can kind of form a reaction and bind, bind to the zona pellucida which then can cause a reaction to occur where that sperm that reaches that sequence first will then inject its DNA okay, or its nuclear material into the actual cytoplasm of that egg. So that is really the final point of fertilization. So that needs to happen for the sperm and the egg to meet. So 
At this point, the sperm has only half its complement of chromosomes and the egg only has half of its complement of DNA or chromosomes. But once they merge together, which we can kind of move through up into here, we get a full complement diploid cell. So that means this cell here, which has now been fertilized completely, it has the full complement of chromosomes. So it has 22 pairs of autosomes and then a sex, two sex chromosomes, which is going to be an X or an XY or an XX, depending on the sex of the um, future fetus or future embryo or the future baby. So it needs to happen and the final sex chromosome is coming from the, the sperm. So the mother or the egg will always be an X chromosome, but the father will give either an X and a Y. And this will then give you the final complement of that particular cell. So that's the final stage of fertilization really. So once the sperm has, the first sperm has bound to the zona pellucida, no further sperm can get in because there's a reaction that takes place with the zona pellucida, which means no more sperm can get into it. Now, once we've moved through into this one cell that's completely matured into that diploid cell, we now move into what we call the cleavage stages. Okay, so this point is called a zygote, it's a one cell embryo. Okay, and all it's going to do now is continue to mitotically replicate. So that one cell is now going to replicate into two cells, into four cells, eight cells, so on, so on. Now, an important concept to be aware of is that there is an outer zona pellucida that stays, remains there. That zona pellucida keeps this, that size intact, so it can't expand. So as the cells start to move through cleavage stages, and now we cleave from one cell into two cells, so at about 30 hours, we're now at two cells. But even though we've doubled the cell number, the zona pellucida, which is on the outside, keeps the size the same, okay? So it can't get bigger. Now, what happens as a result, as we then move into the four cell stage, which is gonna be about 40 hours post fertilization, the size of the cell or the size of the mass remains the same but the cells numbers increase. So each subsequent generation of cleavaging causes the cells to become smaller. Okay, so from that size to that, to that, to that, the cells becoming smaller, the numbers increasing. So once we get to about three days, so this is about three days here, this is now moving into approximately 16 cell in number. And this is, if you look at it, if you were to look at that in the microscope, it would look like, you know, a berry, you know, like a strawberry or a raspberry or a mulberry. And this is why it's named that way, because it actually, the Latins thought it looked like a mulberry and that's why it's called the marula. So the marula is at about three days old post fertilization. It's moving pretty close to the uterus now. So we're moving now down into the top superior aspect of the uterus and as we move through into the uterus the first really stage of cellular differentiation takes place so at this point it was all identical copying so identical mitosis these are just copies of each other however when we move down into the uterus we have the first step of differentiation and what happens as we move down, the uterus is producing some enzymes, which is causing the zona pellucida to start to break down. Um, fluid will start to come into the, um, into the mass, which will cause it to start to swell a bit. But just before it does that, the cells will differentiate into two areas. So you'll have a group of cells that will line on the outside so the zona pellucida is probably just still here, but starting to break down. So you get one layer of cells, so one layer thick all the way around in the red. That's called the outer cell mass. And then you have all this blue group of cells in the middle, clumped up in the top middle. That's called the inner cell mass. 
So the inner cell mass, which is here, that's going to be called okay, the embryoblast. And the outer cell mass is going to be called the trophoblast. So you could probably guess what the embryoblast becomes. That becomes the embryo. Whereas the outer trofo, trofo means to nourish. So these cells are going to nourish the embryo and that's going to be the placenta. So now we're really moving down into the uterus. As I said, the zona pellucida will start to break up. And so by the time it gets towards the uterine wall, the zona pellucida has completely dissolved. And so the whole size has increased because it's increased in fluid. The outer cell mass or the trophoblast will start, start to want to hit the, the wall of the uterus. So these, this is what we call the endometrium, which are just in epithelial cells. So these are all cells here. Now the uterus, so we're now moving into the third stage of the first week, which is the implantation. So as we start to hit the wall, the trophoblast will come into contact with it with the endometrium. Now the endometrium, the stage that the uterus is in, in the menstrual cycle, is in the secretory phase. So that's governed by progesterone. Progesterone is controlled by the, the eggshell of the egg. So the eggs come out, but the outer shell, which is called the corpus luteum, secretes pro progesterone into the blood. Progesterone puts the uterus into its secretory phase which probably helps with breaking down the zona pellucida, but also helps with the implantation. The trophoblast will start to merge with the endometrium and the fluid that goes in through the blastocyst, blastocyst this is now called the blastocyst, the fluid that goes into it will start to cause almost the cells to further separate in the embryoblast into kind of two areas. So this is kind of like one on the bottom, one on the top. This is still in the embryoblast, but we kind of get two layers here. And that's moving into the second week. So we've, we're at about day seven now. So we've gone fertilization, cleavage, implantation. That's all the end of the first week. We'll now move across to this side of the board and we'll move into the second week. Now moving into the second week, so we've done all this stuff in the first week, we're now moving into the second week. So if we were to focus in at the end of the implantation of the first week, we could then move now into what's going to happen entirely in the second week. So what we saw here is we saw the endometrium, which is in its secretory phase, and we saw that the blastocyst would start to engulf into it, so implant and start to invaginate into it. We remember the outside layer, the outer cell mass is going to be called the trophoblast and the inner, inner cell mass which is the embryoblast will start to separate due to the fluid going in. Now if we were to zoom in and move up into here, one of the first things that starts to happen in week, sorry, in week two, about day eight, is the outer the outer trophoblast, which is that outer red layer, will split into two. So there's two sections of that now, which you can see here. Okay, it's going to be on the inner, there's an inner group of cells called the cytotrophoblast, that's the inner group, and on the outer group, that's called the syncytiotrophoblast. Syncytio means to merge, to come together. Now the syncytiotrophoblast particularly will give kind of these pulled radiations that will start to engulf into the endometrium and this is the start of the placenta. So the trophoblast which is formed into two layers, particularly the syncytiotropos, will grow into the endometrium, meet up with blood vessels that are coming down from the, the mother's um, uterus and that will start to form the placenta. But we're not going to go into that any further just as long as you know that there's two kind of formations from the um, trophoblast, which is a syncytia trophoblast, and the uh, cytotrophoblast. Now, looking, focusing more on the embryoblast now, 
we're going to see what happens after about day eight. Now, the top layer, so we saw that fluid was coming into the blaster cyst due to um, the breakdown of the zona pellucidum. Now, the fluid will come in. Now, in that embryo blast, it will separate the two into kind of two layers. What you'll see is that top blue layer, which you can see here, and the bottom black layer is the two layers of the embryo blast that we need to focus on now. Now, the top layer is what we call the epiblast. Epi is upon. So you can see the layer of cells here on top of the embryo. So that would be the top dorsal aspect of the embryo. This is going to be the head end of the embryo. And this is the tail end of the embryo. If we were to cut it in a, in a sagittal section. There is a reflection of... So there's a two layer cells here of the epiblast. And you can see that separates here in this space and that top layer is continuous up on the superior aspect with the cytotrophoblast cells there. The bottom layer of the epiblast is continuous with the black layer of cells here which is the hyperblast cells. So basically moving through the second week what we've really got is this two layer of cells being the epiblast and the hyperblast. Now, the epiblast, we saw, had a, another layer here that gets pushed up into the cyto, cytoblast, or, sorry, the cytotrophoblast. Now, that causes this space to form here, and that's a cavity, and that's what we call the amniotic cavity. And that's essentially where the fetus and the embryo will start to develop in that space. So, in there is going to be amniotic fluid, and that's as the fetus starts to get bigger and bigger, it will grow into that space. So that amniotic membrane will be continuous with the placenta. This embryo part or the epiblast will stay with the hyperblast. Now you can see a reflection of hyperblast coming down here like so. That hyperblast reflection, which is not two layers like the epiblast, it's just a continuation of cells. And that will be cause another space to form in here. And that's called the yolk sac. Now the yolk sac is really going to be taken back in to the gut. So these group of cells here, which are the hyperblast cells, that's going to, once we move into the third week, which is going to be the three layers of cells, this layer of cells, the hyperblast, is going to become something that we call the endoderm. And this reflection here which essentially gives you this yolk sac here will eventually go into the back into the intestines into the gut and that will disappear um, almost completely whereas the amniotic sac and cavity will stay permanent there for the whole duration of the embryo fetus's pregnancy so that's really the end of the second week it doesn't like doesn't look really look like we achieved much but we did have to do quite a lot to go from the early blastocyst into the more complex bilaminar stage. And it's bi meaning two. And when we say two, in the second week, it's really called the week of the twos because there's a lot of twos here. We saw that the trophoblast separated into two layers, the inner cytotrophoblast and the outer syncytiotrophoblast. We saw that the embryo blast gave two layers, an epiblast and a hyperblast. Okay, that's number two. And we saw that there's two cavities forming. The upper amniotic sac or amniotic cavity and the lower yolk sac. So that becomes the end of the second week. And then finally, we're going to finish in the third week. And this is where we move down into two, these two images. Now, in the, in the third week, the big thing that I want you to know or take home from the third week is a term that is called gastrulation. Gastrulation sounds like stomach, stomach formation. And I think the early embryologists thought that there were big stomachs forming, and that's kind of where the, the word derived. But what gastrulation really means is the formation of the three germ layers. We've seen two here but we need to add a third one. Now the three germ layers are essentially 
The epiblast, the top cells, become the ectoderm. The hyperblast cells become the endoderm. And therefore, we need a third layer, which is going to be the mesoderm. And that's what we're going to do for the next few minutes, is just to see how we go from the bilamina into the trilamina. And this is essentially the third week learning outcomes. So let's look here. We've cut the through the embryo in a sagittal plane. So that's like through me like so. So this is going to be the head end. This is going to be the tail end. I know it's difficult to see with just two layers of cells. Now, if you focus on here, so we're going to move down into here. This is still the same plane. So on the top layer is these cells here. These are all merged now into just a big plane of cells. Okay, so that's the epiblast here through like so. This is all the epiblast, which is all through here. The reflection up here is going to be the amniotic sac, and this is going to be the amniotic space or amniotic cavity. Down below it, we can see the hyperblast cells here like so. So that's this layer here. We're just moving a few days ahead, so it's starting to look a bit different. The hyperblast are just these group of cells here, like so. I'll just fill this in here, like so, just so it's continuous. Now the reflection down, remember, is the yolk sac. So this would continue down like so. Okay, that's, so it's almost like two tubes are on top of each other. This reflection back, like so, of the yolk sac is the connecting stalk. So that's going to go into the placenta and this is going to be the amniotic, sorry, this is going to be the umbilical tube and the allantois and so forth. So this allows nutrients to come in and out of the fetus or blood to come in and out of the fetus as well as certain byproducts to come out from the bladder or that's going to be the bladder. So that's the cross section, sorry, that's the sagittal section here. So that's the epiblast on top, hyperblast on bottom, going down to the yolk sac or going up to the amniotic cavity. Now we need, need to move into a cross section. So if I was to put a cut straight through like so, cut through like so, and then I was to pull it around like that, so cut through the epiblast, hyperblast, and turn it around like that, we would see that, okay? So this is looking down in a cross section. So we've cut through, turned it around, and now looking down. So this would be all the, this is the epiblast cells here, epiblast cells here. But because I've cut it in a cross section like this, this is all the top of the epiblast like so. So we're moving in from the 14th, 15th day here. And so all this plane of, or plate of cells, this is the bilaminar plate, this is the epiblast here like so. This would be the reflection up, going over like that of the amniotic cavity, and that's the yolk sac going down like that. So this is now transitioning into the third week. The first thing that kind of happens is this streak starts to form running the length of the embryo. So it would be kind of happening down here like so. But because we've cut it, you can only see it in, in this plane. And then we have this kind of node starting to form like this. This is called the primitive streak and the primitive node. What that does is it almost acts like a plug hole and cells will start to be sucked towards it on both sides. So cells of the epiblast will start to suck in to that and start to drop through into this space. And so these cells will start to come through like so on each side and start to fill through here. And this is now the formation of the third germal layer, which is the mesoderm. So that's coming on it, coming through that primitive streak, primitive node, through the epiblast and coming down to fill that space on each end. Now remember this is in cross section, but if you move it in the sagittal, where it would go through that primitive node or primitive streak, it would go down at the front end as well. So this would move not only side to side, but it would move front to back. So this 
mesoderm is starting to fill up that space as well from the front or the cranial end to the caudal end, to the tail. Now this is an interesting point here because what happens is the mesoderm will fill all that space, all to that side, all to that side. So that's going to be the side of the embryo, the lateral. This is the medial, lateral, lateral. So we cut through here, so you're looking on either side. This is the dorsal aspect. This is the ventral aspect. So if that was me, that would be the back. That's the back of the embryo. And that's the ventral part of the embryo. Now this is a sagittal cut. So this is the top end. So this is the head. And this is the tail. Okay, but I've cut in a cross section here. Now, the mesoderm will essentially fill up all this space. Now, there's two places where it doesn't go. And that's going to be right here and right here. That's called the stomatodeum and the proctodeum. That's going to be your mouth. That's going to be the anus. And so that's important to know because there's only two places in the body. And this is the anatomical body, the, the adult body, is where there's no mesoderm. That's your mouth and that's your anus. So that means there's only two spots where there's only ectoderm and endoderm. Ectoderm, endoderm. No mesoderm. That's anus and mouth. And that means there's no mesoderm there, which is important to know because sometimes you can, in terms of blood vessels, um, the way that the the mouth and the way that the anus is drained, it can go straight into the systemic circulation, whereas all the rest has to go in, in through the liver. And so you can give medications in the mouth or the anus that will bypass the liver. And that is important to know clinically. And that's the reason why, because there's only ectoderm and endoderm. There's no mesoderm in between. So that's the future mouth, the future rectum. Now, so continuing on here, Essentially, the inner part is just filling, just filling the space of mesoderm like so. And this will just continue through the third week um, to give that mesodermal layer. So that top layer, which was once the epiblast, is giving you the mesoderm. But once it gives you the mesoderm, this epiblast gets renamed into the ectoderm. And this bottom hyperblast layer becomes what we call the endoderm. Now finally, the final point till we, we finish in the end of third week is there's a group of mesodermal cells that kind of sit right smack bang in the middle of the fetus or the embryo should I say. And that's this group of cells that have just coalesced to form this big rod shape. So that's running like straight down the middle of like that. So that would also run through like that. So in the sagittal section, it would run from there all the way through to the tail. And that's what we call the notochord. The notochord is very important because that is going to give the, the embryo symmetry. So that's going to give it a right side and a left side and everything's mirrored from that. It's going to be important to help form the brain and spinal cord because essentially the neural tube will start to form there. And it will be also important to help the body sequence into not only layers as you move down, but also into a right and left. So that's really the end of the third week. Third week we saw the change from the bilamina into the trilamina. We saw the mesoderm being added. We saw the change from the epiblast into the ectoderm and we saw the hyperblast change into the endoderm like that. We've got the yolk sac that will continue down like so and the amniotic sac that reflects up like that. Now with those three germal layers, which is the end of the third week, that process is what we call gastrulation and all the cells in your body come from one of those three germal layers. The endoderm will essentially make your entire gut tube from your mouth all the way through to your anus. So that will incorporate the yolk sac, which helps to make your gut tube. Okay, But essentially all the cells in your gut from your esophagus, your mouth, your stomach, your intestines, all the way through come from that layer of cells. 
the ectoderm, the top layer, that will give you all the outer covering of the, of the, of the body. So it's going to give you the skin, the hair, the nails, the enamel of the teeth, so forth. It will also cause it to branch up and give you the neural tube. So that will give you your brain and give you the spinal cord. And then finally, the mesoderm, which is in the middle, that will give you everything else. It will give you your muscles, it will give you your ligaments, it will give you your bones, it will give you your tendons, it will give blood vessels and connective tissue. So that's all the rest of it. So that really ends the end of the, end of the embryogenesis. What really happens now is the systems start to grow and um, become more distinct. And so the following videos or the following lectures will look at each specific system and how we develop them. This is really the basis of how it all starts. And then we go off and form the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, the urinary system, etc. So at this end point, we've seen the trilaminous form and now we can go and create each individual system.